You're watching the Aramco 2022 F1 Car Reveal Series. Aston Martin is the third team to hold a 2022 Formula One launch, but the first to show us a real-life car. The Aston Martin AMR22 was present in all its glory during the launch. The plan is for the car to be shaken down at Silverstone on February 11th, so the day after the launch. That means Aston Martin will be the first team to run its 2022 car ahead of the start of pre-season testing later this month. And just to prove that it did reveal a genuine article, the car that runs on track will be the exact one that appeared in the launch. Not only has it revealed to the world its genuine car, but Aston Martin has also released a plethora of images. This means that the watching world, including the race, is able to take a close look at both the overall concept and the design details of a car built to these new regulations for the first time. So with the help of the race's technical expert Gary Anderson and illustrator Rosario Giuliana, let's take a closer look at the Aston Martin AMR22. The front wing comprises the maximum permitted four elements. As Gary Anderson points out, the lowest one, the main plane, is relatively shallow and therefore primarily a flow conditioner. This leaves the heavy lifting to be done primarily by the second element, with the top two flaps offering additional downforce and adjustability. Note that Aston Martin has also moved its front wing flap adjuster inboard, having been close to the end plates previously. The nose has a pronounced raised undersection in order to help the airflow coming off the centre section of the front wing towards the front of the floor. This gives the front wing a swept down look as it moves outboard. Note also that the slope of the nose increases at the interface between the nose and the front of the chassis, roughly in line with the suspension. The front suspension is a conventional pushrod with a double wishbone design. The steering track rod is in line with the top wishbone, which effectively increases the depth of the top wishbone's forward leg. This helps to realign the airflow coming from the front wing flaps. Although the front suspension is a transferable component, and therefore can be supplied by another team, this is Aston Martin's own work. This is because it wanted to have design freedom in this area, and ensure it didn't have to wait on the Mercedes design it could have taken thanks to its technical partnership. But if you look closely at the renders Aston Martin issued, the front pushrod on the right side of the car is missing. Fortunately, that is on the real car, and that was simply an error in the render. While the incredibly complex barge boards are no more, teams still want to improve the quality of the airflow to the leading edge of the side pods. But Aston Martin does feature a turning vane at the front of the floor that's a little more like the original barge boards that we saw introduced to F1 at the start of 1993 by McLaren. Aston Martin's side pods are longer than in previous years, and markedly longer than what we saw on the 2022 Haas images. This is about maximising the surface area given the need to generate as much downforce as possible from the underfloor for these ground effect cars. So as in the glory days of F1 ground effect in the late 1970s and early 1980s, viewed from above, the cars are a lot boxier than they were last year. But combined with this is an aggressively undercut side pod. This means the Aston Martin isn't too far off a twin floor design, as pioneered by Ferrari back in 1992, as it attempts to maximise the airflow around the side pods to the rear of the car and over the top of the diffuser, increasing its performance. It has a very aggressive undercut. On top of the side pods, Aston Martin features the new for 2022 top surface louvres. These channel the hot air exiting the radiators to the top surface of the beam wing. The coke bottle area is fed by the flow coming through the undercut side pods. In effect, this undercut more or less meets up on the car's centre line at the rear. Maximising this area means the airflow being spilled off the rear tyres has somewhere to go, other than around the outside of the tyre, which would generate more drag. At the rear of the car, the Mercedes influence is clear. Technical Director Andrew Green has confirmed that in addition to the Mercedes power unit, it has also taken the gearbox and rear suspension from its technical partner. That means it again runs the swept back rear suspension design that makes for cleaner airflow at the rear of the car. Aston Martin chose to take the Mercedes rear suspension because it has been designed to work with a gearbox, rather than going their own way. But it's only at the rear end that Aston Martin has taken from Mercedes, despite the regulations allowing far more transferable components. 
The rear wing features the DRS actuator, the first time we've seen that on a genuine 2022 rear wing. Gary Anderson has highlighted the fact that the outer pivot point is just before the flap curves downwards, saying it's interesting to see what sort of a vortex is generated when the flap separates from the end plates. The beam wing returns in 2022, having been illegal since the start of 2014. It's a twin element design with an upright flap that fits neatly around the exhaust outlet. It's hoped the beam wing will reduce the turbulence generated for a following car to hit. Aston Martin has also not completely hidden the diffuser, which is designed to the maximum size allowed by the regulations. There are also small gurney flaps around the trailing edge to help diffuser performance. They also have outer turning vanes mounted from the rear brake ducts. These are very powerful in that they mount directly to the upright assembly, so in effect there is no lag in the downforce they produce because of suspension movement. So even when the chassis is moving around because of braking or over kerbs, what load these produce goes directly into the contact patch. As there is no footplate on the actual diffuser in this area, they also help seal the diffuser from the airflow that is being displaced when the tyre rotates on the track surface. As we've explained, there's no lack of detail in Aston Martin's launch car, with more likely to be revealed when we see the car in action. You're watching the Aramco 2022 F1 Car Reveal Series. No one doubts the enormous potential of Aston Martin in Formula 1. But while 2022 can and must be stronger than last year's disappointing 7th in the Constructors' Championship, it's too early to expect Aston Martin to be a championship threat. Aston Martin chairman Lawrence Stroll, who rescued the team in 2018, said last year that the timescale for emerging as a title challenger was three to five years. This is because it is still in the process of expanding, with an aggressive recruitment drive increasing its headcount from around 400 when Stroll acquired the team to over 500 people and growing. This includes some senior appointments, with a raft of high-profile recruits from rival teams, including Mercedes and Red Bull. Most recently, Aston Martin finally agreed a start date of April 2nd this year for new technical director Dan Fallows after a period of wrangling with his former employer, Red Bull. It has also appointed ex-BMW motorsport boss Mike Crack as its new team principal, in place of Otmar Safnauer. It is also in the process of building a new factory on its expanded Silverstone site. The first phase of this is a new main building that will house the design office and that will be completed early in 2023. The second phase, which is also underway, is a building of around 100 square feet to house the new state-of-the-art wind tunnel that will be fully operational by 2024. The cost of this new campus is estimated at between 150 and 200 million pounds. These are seismic changes, so not only will it take time for the work to be completed, but also for the team, which is also increasing its in-house production resource, to get everything working well. Turning what has historically been an overachieving midfield team into a genuine front runner is not the work of a moment. Aston Martin is making all of the right moves and investing in the correct areas, but it will be several years before the team can realise its ambition of becoming one of F1's big beasts. This doesn't make 2022 a season with nothing at stake and a marked improvement is required. But it does mean Aston Martin and team owner Lawrence Stroll must keep their expectations in check this year. For the past two seasons, Aston Martin has run a car that was effectively a copy of the all-conquering 2019 Mercedes W10. We won't rake over the coals of the controversy about that car, which we've covered in detail in previous videos, but it was designed through a process of studying the car, partly using methods that have since been made illegal in the regulations. But the new Aston Martin AMR22 is all the team's own work, save for the fact it continues to take the Mercedes gearbox and hydraulics along with its power unit supply. The clean sheet of paper design for the new technical regulations could not draw inspiration from cars produced by its rivals, which makes it a stern test of the technical strength of the team in terms of design and development work. Potentially, the copycat car strategy could have made this side of the team stronger. After all, prior to 2020, it ran a high-rate concept, then switched to the low-rate design when it cloned the Mercedes, given it experience and hopefully understanding of the different approaches. 
It also had to work hard to understand exactly how the Mercedes concept worked, not only to be able to replicate it well, but also to produce its own developments, as it did in the second half of 2020 and last season. You could argue that Aston Martin's 2021 struggles proved this approach failed. The campaign was certainly disappointing, but it's possible it was just a blip, caused by the set of four small but significant aerodynamic rule changes introduced at the start of 2021 that Aston Martin blamed for its struggles, given the problems it caused for the low-rate concept. And while Mercedes managed to develop its car to be strong enough to win the Constructors' Championship, Aston Martin wasn't in the fight at the front, so couldn't risk compromising 2022 design work to improve its car too much. So the team had to make the best of a bad job. It didn't necessarily do that very successfully, but the priority was always 2022, given the new technical regulations that Aston Martin hopes will give it a platform to push on towards the front in the coming years. Making progress this year will prove the team has indeed learned from its Mercedes clone project, and that the technical strength that allowed the team to punch above its weight prior to Stroll's takeover has not only been preserved, but augmented.